Hi everybody! Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be talking in just a minute about true empowerment and that it's an inside job. So first of all, I want to send out a huge amount of gratitude to Shelly for creating such an amazing conscious coaching group um, and then this conscious training that she's implemented and put into place and this space and this gathering of amazing women with so much amazing, amazing knowledge um, and for inviting me to speak today. So my name's Erin Strayer. Thanks for joining me today. I help female entrepreneurs to level up themselves and or their businesses, pushing them out of average or just getting by and in a forward motion to finding and achieving a better self, better business um, programs or a better business model um, and achieving um, that which is important to them, um, getting clear and decisive steps to implement immediately and speaking to their underlying um, desires to get past average <laughs> um, and allowing themselves to create a space to receive better clients, more time with their family, and more money to do what they want. So that's who I am. I spent 24 years as a level one trauma surgical assistant. Uh, I've been in all but seven states and um, d my lane changed about two years ago and I stepped away um, from my, my medical career. Um, and um, during that time though, I found out that I really had a passion for teaching and helping and facilitating um, people's growth patterns and um, Along the lines also, I was a prior owner of a multi-million dollar company. I had over 60 employees. We took up a whole city block. It was quite an experience. Um, I've also been very instrumental in platform development for uh, startup companies recently. Um, and I've also um, most recently been a growth facilitator, can't talk, facilitator for a small retail business uh, that has two locations and helped them with some massive amounts of growth um, that they were encompassing. Um, um, I'm also a wife and a mom. Um, and forgive me as I have notes prepared and they're off to the side here so I don't ramble on um, and I keep, I keep on track because I tend to get off track. So forgive me for doing that. I hope you have a notebook handy. We're going to move fast. And I have some exercises that we're going to be doing um, while we're here in this moment. And just to kind of, I do this with all my clients and it's something that's very important to me. And we're going to just going to take a moment and, um, and set the intention for this talk and our time together. So if you'll just kind of take a deep breath and close your eyes with me for just a moment. Kind of center ourselves in this time and in this space. And that we can obtain valuable information, either for me or for you, for both of us, in this time that we share together, that the information that's shared is for our best and our highest good, that we as women continue to support and uplift and encourage one another and be that complement, as there are no um, crossing of lines here. There is no competition in my world among women. We need to continue to support them. So as we move forward today, thank you for that moment. Um, we're going to move fast today, ladies. Um, we're going to be covering true empowerment and that that's an inside job. Um, we're going to um, cover easy ways to empower yourself, to get out of the average slump, and to create a space where you can receive the abundance that you are worthy of. Ah, okay, so what does that mean? What do you mean we got to work from the inside out? Oh my gosh, okay, so if you have your notebook handy, I hope you do, because I told you to have it handy. Um, so, <laughs> um, thanks Christy. Um, grab your notebook, and I want you to really quickly write down a handful of words that um, around the word empowerment and what that means to you. So, in my mind, um, when I speak of the word empowerment in my head, I see Superwoman. And she's flying and her cape is out there and she's got awesome socks on and her hair is done all the time and she is going through brick walls and nothing can get past her and um, she can tackle anything that comes her way. So she's strong 
and she's a strong, strong woman. Man, I want to be that. I want to emulate that. I want that person to lead me, to guide me, to encourage me, to teach me. That's what I think of empowerment. Um, but to really be in that space, for ourselves to be in that space and to be that person, we all are and we all have, because we're women, we have two chromosomes, we we're gifted, we're the superiors, <laughs> but we're all that awesome person. We all are that super girl and we all are enough and we all are amazing. But empowerment is an inside job and things will continue to be average until the work on the inside is done. So your clients are going to straggle in. Your money is going to be scarce. Your relationships are going to be strained. Our bodies will decline. Our mental, emotional, physical, spiritual well-beings are going to be a complete disaster and struggle. What? Are you kidding me? Is anybody with me on that? Give me some thumbs up unless you're scribbling too fast. But how do I possibly work through that, work on that, change that, get past that? Average. You have to go inside. All the work, all the work is done on the inside, not on the outside. The work is on the outside. It's not on the outside though, guys. That work that we think is work, all that paperwork, the Facebook groups, the Twitter posts, the YouTube stuff, the speaking engagements, all the laundry and the kids and dinner and friends, right? That's the work that you see. That continues to pile up. So take a deep breath with me. Whoo, this is gonna go fast, guys. All the work we need to do is on the inside. That's what I said. All the work that allows us to be those freaking fantastic, amazing people on the outside that people are drawn to and are magnetized all the time, they're all attracted to us. All the work that makes us those amazing superwoman, two chromosomes cape showing people is done on the inside so here's step one okay they're going to be easy but sometimes they're hard our first one we got a little exercise so um it's all about our breath so i want you to close your eyes focus on my voice take a deep breath in through your nose and slowly let it out through your mouth Average, my friend, is just playing safe. Though you want more, you want more clients, you want more time with your friends and your family or yourself, you want more money to do what you want to do. You want more. There's always more that you want, but average is holding you back, allowing you to play safe and just get by. Take another deep breath. Concentrate on your breath. As you breathe in, Breathe in all the goodness that you deserve in this moment. You deserve this time. You deserve this training. You deserve to be above average, and you deserve to be a priority. As you let that breath out, release all that does not serve you. Might be a long exhale. All the stress, all the anxiety, the never-ending list, let it go. Let it go. We can only function, focus on one thing at a time. Hear me out on this. I know we're super people and we are amazing multitaskers, but our brains can honestly only process one thing at a time. But wait, I'm not kidding. I know and I recognize because I'm an awesome multitasker too. And that's my, one of my strong points. But really, realistically, our brain can only process one of those multitasking things at a time. So it's clicking off pretty fast in my world. So while you're focusing on your breath and on my voice, you are actually becoming present right here. Okay? So this is where the magic begins, ladies. Right here. In the present. Right here. Our nervous system needs to slow down just long enough to regroup, to reduce your stress, to improve your concentration, to increase your self-awareness, and to maintain your superpowers. <laughs> so take another deep breath. If you haven't already opened your eyes, do so now. I want to let you know when I use this. I use this breathing method to 
refocus myself when I'm stressed, when I don't like a conversation, when I'm time crunched, before I engage in an argument, sometimes instead, or in addition to counting to 10 in that case, (laughs) Um, and before I start any appointments, I use this breath and this identification and this centering and this um, becoming present. Um, it does bring me present. It allows me to focus on the now and in this moment. It improves efficiency and time management. It really does. And it brings balance to the present. Okay, so that's step one, breath, be present. Step number two, you guys still with me? Give me some thumbs up, something. Let me know you're here and you're hanging on. Um, Step number two is gratitude. So in my world, gratitude is the missing link. Um, It opens up our heart. And it opens you up to receiving. Thanks, guys. (laughs) Gratitude and giving thanks are actually two different things. Yep. Hang on with me again here. Here we go into exercise number two. I want you to close your eyes and take a deep breath in. And I want you to say the word thank you. With your eyes still closed, I want you to recognize where in your body you feel the word. When you say it, and I want you to write it down on your piece of paper with your eyes closed because you can do that because you're super women. So if you feel the need to refocus, take another deep breath and say it again. And feel where in your body you feel that word. Are you with me? Open your eyes. You should have felt the word thank you in your head. Okay? We're going to move on. We're going to do this exercise again. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and say the word gratitude. Okay, we're going to repeat it with your eyes closed. Where in your body do you feel the word gratitude? Again, if you need to refocus, take that breath again. Feel into the word. And where do you feel it? You should feel it in your heart, in the center of your chest. Okay, why does this make a difference? You guys can open your eyes. Thanks, giving thanks, thank you is an automatic response. It's one that we do all day long. We never ever think about it. Thanks for dinner. Thanks for holding the door. Thanks for the call. Thanks for getting that for me. Thanks for the cup of coffee. Thanks for the piece of paper. Thanks for picking up my pen off the floor. You don't even think about it. It's off the cuff and there's not much emotion or sincerity connected most of the time. Gratitude on the other hand is absolutely on purpose. It's an on purpose response. Usually you're lost for words. You can't even find them. You're overcome with emotion because you're touched so deeply by the action. And usually the receiver is as touched as you. You guys with me on this? So the difference between giving thanks and having gratitude, one comes from your head, you're thinking about it. The other one comes from the heart, you're feeling it. It's sincere. How do you get started showing gratitude or being aware of it? Okay. Number one thing I tell my clients to do is start a gratitude journal, okay? Super, super, super easy to do. Easy to find that super cute journal. Write it down. Three to five things, either in the morning or at night before you go to bed. Three to five things in your day that you are have gratitude for. So your shoes matched. You had a to- you know toothpaste to brush your teeth. Your hair looked great. You found a parking spot. It doesn't have to be great, big, huge things. It doesn't have to be great, big, huge things. It's the little things that we take for granted that you need to back up and show gratitude for. So that's one way you can do it. Okay, your gratitude journal. Another one is a gratitude jar. And this is another exercise that I love doing with my clients, my family. I love doing it with my family. Um, have a jar for each person in your family, have their names on them, make them cute if you want to. Um, and every day, write on a little sli- slip of paper, one thing about that person that you love, that you adore, why you trust them, why you love them in your world. It's fantastic to do with your spouse or your significant other. Um, and then at the end of the week, you have like a little gathering, maybe it's a date night. You take your lawn chairs out, sit by the campfire and you read them to each other. It's super, super, super powerful and things that we never, ever say to each other. Another thing is we have a gratitude garden. I know it sounds like a huge thing, but it's not. That sits in the middle of our dining room table. And it's a homemade piece of pottery that was gifted to us that's one of a kind. 
inside of that is a money tree that was also gifted to us that my son has put worms in to make sure that the dirt stays soil um, properly you know aerated and has the proper things in it the worms give the dirt so we have uh, our center stone of our home in there that happens to be a quartz crystal um, inside this gratitude jar, um, garden that sits in the center of our home it's very very powerful very powerful there's things that we've collected as a family that are very important to us that live in that little container um, and I'm going to kind of roll through real quick an example of one of my clients. She ran me down in a um, parking lot this summer um, running after me. She is a highly educated lady. She's a, a teacher. She runs her own business. Um, she actually um, helps uh, postpartum depression women um, get over and through their disaster that they're in and she's an amazing woman and she hired me and I I told her to start a gratitude journal and um, so that was last fall this summer she ran me down in the in the parking lot and she's like Aaron 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 oh my gosh I have to tell you I absolutely despised you actually no I hated you when you made me do that exercise she said and it was horrible I made myself do it and I didn't even like it and and then it started to become fun and it started to become awesome and it started to be something that I looked forward to every night and then I started implementing it with my husband and then all of a sudden my boys started doing it and they wanted to do it at dinner and say things that they were grateful for at dinner she goes and it's become this amazing amazing connection with our family so I want to say thank you for that she goes, the other cool thing, Erin, I'm not done. <laughs> this was a long time in the parking lot with this girl. She likes to talk, unlike me. Um, she's like, it's really, really cool to go back to the first week of writing that journal, which was over three months ago at that time. And she said, it's really, really cool to see how far I've come in my writing, in the things that I find that I'm grateful for during my day, and how I feel as a person inside. So thank you for that. All right, guys, how are we doing? Thumbs up. Are you good? Is this valuable information for you? Is this stuff that you don't know? If you're getting uh, anything, give me a little thumbs up here. Um, we're going to keep moving. That was step number two, which is gratitude, the missing link. Okay, first one was your breath. Second one's gratitude, missing link. Um, opens your heart and opens you to be able to receive. Okay, number three uh, is your foundation and your walls of protection. Duh. What are you talking about? I'm not building nothing, Aaron. Yes, you are. Every single one of you do. Every single one of you do. If you're in this group, you have a business, you, have a you need to have a foundation. Okay? That, I'm not talking about your business plan. I'm talking about things that keep your business strong. Okay? Integrity, honesty, follow through, consistency, right? All the normal stuff. Doing what you say when you're going to do it and following through. Doing the right thing when nobody's looking. Right? doing that extra little thing above and beyond, right? So that's the kind of things that I think of. It's also what you do to support yourself. Proper rest, mental, right? Proper food, physical, proper words, emotional, proper time for you, spiritual. All of these things need to be balanced and honored in order for your foundation to be solid. All of these things need to be balanced and honored for your walls of protection to stand strong, okay? If you don't honor proper food, what happens? You get sick. If you don't honor proper rest, what happens? You get sick. If you don't honor proper words, what happens? You get sick. If you don't honor proper time for you, you, what happens? That's a tough one. You get sick, right? You see a pattern? Okay, so how do you start making time for yourself for all this stuff? You start by honoring yourself because you're worth it and you need to make yourself a priority. Okay, what's a priority in your schedule? Okay, your clients, appointments with other people, doctors, physicians, hair ladies, picking up the kids. Why are you not a priority put yourself on your calendar 
if that's what you need to do to make yourself a priority, put yourself on a day gone calendar. I almost swore. Um, once you do this, your world will get easier. You will love yourself more. And your love for yourself is absolutely going to come out into your daily encounters. So put yourself on your calendar and make it a habit. It's extremely, extremely important. And one other thing, one other very, very important thing that I did in my business was I quit playing small. I put another pillar up so my roof wouldn't cave in, okay? I invested in myself. I hired a coach. I invested in my business. You have to invest in money to make money, right? Okay, we're all coaches here. It's not personal. This is business. You have to do that. The other thing I did for myself and in my business is I stepped it up and I legally protected my business. Okay? If that's something that you haven't done and you want to talk to me about that, it's unbelievably important to do that. Is your IP protected? Do you even know what that is? It's your intellectual properties. That's your right to your information. That's not anybody else's. Nobody else can duplicate it. Nobody else can take it and use it for theirs, right? It's like plagiarism. Nobody else can do it. Is yours protected? Okay. If you want some information about that, message me later, you know, now, whatever. But we, I got to keep moving. I'm talking too much. Um, you have to protect yourself. It's very, very, very important, um, especially if you need to move from an LLC to a C-Corp or whatever. If you're implementing like um, multiple different companies within yours, you have to protect yourself. You have to have that, that link. So anyways, number three is foundation and walls of protection. You guys still with me? Everybody doing okay? I got to take a deep breath and take a quick little drink here. You guys keep your favorite cups with you. Okay. Um, number four, step number four is vocabulary. Nope, we're not taking a spelling test. Okay. Why is vocabulary important to your empowerment? Okay. Cause that's what we're talking about here, right? Steps to empower you and that it comes from the inside. So words are incredibly important people. The way you use words has a tremendous impact on the quality of your life quality of your life. I'm not kidding. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Got your pens. Um, certain words are destructive and other words are empowering. Okay, so I want you to draw a column wherever you're at in your notepad and on one side, uh, one side's going to be your destructive words. The other side's going to be your empowering words. Okay, so here we go. Um, on the destructive side, you're going to write problem. On the other side, you're going to write opportunity. Okay, so a problem is a de <laughs> derailing. That's the word that came out of my mouth. It's actually a deadening phrase. Okay, it's heavy and it's negative versus opportunity. It opens doors to growth, right? Hi, Terry, no problem. You can catch up later. Keep on coming, honey. Get your pen out. Um, I love to say that I turn problems or what other people think are problems into opportunities. Okay, so those challenges and those things that um, you think are a problem, flip them to become an opportunity, okay? That's number one. Number two, can't. And under your destructive column, and won't in the other one. So I can't implies that you have no control over your life, whereas I won't puts a situation in your control. I can't tells your subconscious that you are weak. You're weak. Yeah, I can't tell your subconscious that you're weak. And your subconscious believes only what it hears, not what is true. Okay, your subconscious believes only what it hears, not what is true. Okay, another, another power word in the <laughs> destructive column, should. In the empowering column, could okay should is a loser loser <laughs> it implies that you have no choice and no control it brings guilt and upset totally draining your emotions and your power is taken away every time you utter the word i should i could is totally empowering you 
and putting you in a position of choice instead of obligation. Pretty heavy, huh? I know I wasn't going to go through all these. I don't know how much time I got, guys. Um, Another one in the um, destructive category is hope. On the other side, no, K-N-O-W. I hope is a victim phrase. It's a dreamer, promotes worry, fear, and weakness. Okay? I know, K-N-O-W, is a doer. It embraces power, confidence, and I got this girl go. I got it. Okay? So, start eliminating these negative words, these disempowering words, and implementing those power words, and you will become amazed at how empowered you feel on the inside when you start to recognize those. And I know it seems really, really trivial, but believe me, it makes a huge difference. Um, and your sense of yourself will change great, greatly. Um, people are also going to notice a difference in you. So I kind of challenge you to keep track of that mentally or on a piece of paper, maybe at night on your gratitude journal. Hey, I recognized that I was making the wrong choices there. My earrings are bunking. Um, and make sure those uh, weak world words don't zap your energy, okay? Or the energy of those around you or your clients, okay? Make sure you have power words that fill you and lift your vibration to attract a higher vibration, okay? So number four, vocabulary, power words. Choose them wisely, okay? Because they're uber powerful. Is everybody doing okay? We got one more to go through here and then... Uh, I don't know what time I got. I'm going to talk fast. Okay, self-care is number five. We already kind of sort of touched on on self-care in step three with the foundation, but we're going to go a little bit deeper into self-care. And I'm going to tell you what I do in my routine and myself on a daily basis. Um, Self-care doesn't mean in this moment, in this context, it doesn't mean um, making sure you get your hair and nails done every six weeks, okay? That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is what you do on a daily basis to take care of you, okay? So this is what I do. It's going to get a little personal, but I'm going to tell you what I do, okay? So I get up a half an hour before the rest of my house does. I don't turn on any lights, and I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. I scoot into the bathroom, and I pee, and I go sit in my space, Okay. I don't turn any lights on because that activates your brain. Okay. It also puts EMFs into the, into the universe and kind of allows those little, um, wiggies. They're like little gremlins out there that kind of make our nervous system do a hiccup. Um, and, um, yeah, you know, when you flip that light on it, it just really, um, takes you out of that quiet and that calm space. Um, and put you into a go mode. Okay. So I, um, I found a couple apps that I like to, um, listen to in the morning. Um, they're meditation apps. I have them on my phone. Um, I figured out the ones that I like and I don't like. Um, and I started quite honestly with five minutes and I've worked up to 20 or 30. Sometimes I do it twice a day. Just depends on my day and what I need in the day. Um, so I sit and I meditate and I start my day and I set my day so I can show up present with my clients. Okay. What else have I done, um, to implement, uh, self-care? Um, a huge regiment in my world is, um, the implementation of essential oils. Okay. Um, you guys know that I spent 24 years in level one trauma, um, in the medical world. Um, I also have, um, a pretty deep heritage though. I don't look native American. Um, <laughs> I have a pretty deep, um, heritage on, um, in root, you know, uh, in that field. Um, and so it was very, very interesting to me to find out that there was an alt- another way. So um, I became super immersed in essential oils because I had to at the time. That's a whole nother story. Um, and I have over 400 hours of personal study hours in it. And I'm also certified through Aroma Head University. So um, it's an entire module in, t- in my program that I teach on and it takes a ton of time. But um, I'm going to cover really very, very quickly three or four of my absolute favorite essential oils that I implement, that I use, that I don't even go into my office or start a conversation with a client without them. So the first one is, you guys, are you guys with me? Everybody here? Um, Is bergamot, okay? B-E-R-G-O-M-O-T is how you spell it. Um, It's the oil of self-acceptance. 
Um, it's the same flavor in Earl Grey tea that I drink all the time. Um, it aids in digestion, enhances immunity. Um, it's a key in easing mild depression, uh, soothes stress and calms anxiety. Um, it relieves um, feelings of self-judgment and low self-esteem, helps with the constant monkey mind and list making and negative self-talk and it awakens the soul to hope and offers courage to share the inner self now why wouldn't you do that one right that's a winner in my world so my next favorite one is clary sage it's the um, oil of clarity and vision okay it's useful for indigestion respiratory uh, conditions muscle aches and pains but it's especially suited for all of our superhuman, superwoman, excuse me, we got two X chromosomes, superwoman, yin yang hormone emotions. Okay, so God made us fabulous and we were born with our capes. Remember, we go through brick walls um, and every single day is different for us. So um, what Clary Sage does is it helps to um, even out those huge waves of major uh, hormonal shifts um, and makes it more of a manageable ripple. So um, PMS, postpartum depression, menopause, huge um, assets in those specific symptoms um, with Clary Sage. It also relieves mild depression, stress, tension. It gives you courage to see the truth and limiting beliefs, um, opening the soul to the new possibilities. So that's another awesome, awesome, awesome um, essential oil. Um, and those two oils go together really, really nicely, um, balancing out. Um, another favorite of mine is jasmine. It's the balance, uh, oil of balance and purity. Um, it's anti-inflammatory, relieves muscle spasms, um, mild depression, anxiety, and stress. Seeing a pattern with the anxiety and stress and mild depression helps boost confidence and creativity, self-acceptance, trust, and safety. Yeah, another really good one. And not only that, it's one of my favorite, favorite flowers. It takes me back to California like that. Um, vanilla is the hormone uh, oil of hormone balance. So pairs very nicely with clary sage, right? It evokes nice, warm memories, calms the emotions, relieves step it, stress and grief. This is a cool one. It assists with uh, your loss of libido, which who can't have help there um, and it relieves anxiety and um, also assists with high blood pressure so it's pretty cool and individually these are amazing by themselves and because I love these uh, four oils so much um, I started playing around and mixing them together and this is one of the things that I offer if this is of interest to you um, go ahead and message me and um, we can go forward from there but one of the things that I, I have available is um, I made it up into a cool little um, roller ball in oil. I wear it all the time. Um, people, people walk by me all the time. Oh my gosh, you smell so yummy. And I pull mine out and I give it to them. Um, but these together, um, it's easy to carry in your purse. It smells amazing. Um, and it really assists with feeling empowered. Um, and that's the name of that blend. It's exclusively mine. Um, nobody else has anything like it. Um, but um, that's where we are right now. If that interests you, let me know. Um, but that was step five in my personal five steps to self-care. So I'm going to recap and then we go into question and answer. If we still got time, I don't know. Um, step one was breath. One thing at a time, be present. Step number two was gratitude, the missing link, right? Okay. Uh, open your heart to receive. Um, step number three is foundation in your walls of protection. Okay, make yourself a priority. Um, step number four was vo four was vocabulary. Your words are really powerful. Make sure you are using empowered words, not depowering words. Okay. And step number five is self care, and my personal routine um, was step five in the essential oils. So if anybody has any questions, I don't know if we have maybe three or four minutes um, open right now. If you have any questions, I'm going to kind of pop up here. Um, if there's anything that you're wanting additional information on, if you popped in late, um, let me know. Um, but you're also welcome to message me. If any of this resonated with you, I'd love to know. Give me some thumbs up as we roll here. Um, my screen is really delayed on people. Um, if you want, again, I'm going to loop back around. If you want additional information on how 
I chose my personal legal coverage. Message me if you want additional information on this essential oil blend. Message me um, if you're wanting to just uh, hop in and, and connect. Uh, message me, okay? We'll we'll deal with all that there. But if there's anything specific about this um, particular talk, go ahead and um, um, stick it in the comments right below here. I'm going to try to hop on and see if I can stream you from my. I had dropped my notes down. Um, Just let me know how you're doing and how you're thinking. Where are we? Here we are. Um, but I've really appreciated my time here. And um, I'm just going to sit here for just a minute. Just because I love being with you ladies. And enjoyed my day today. Shelly, thank you again very much for uh, having me as a speaker today. I hope that what I have presented and brought forward um, has been of value. Otherwise, it's a waste of all of our times, right? So I really, really hope that it has been of value to you and um, that you have gotten something um, out of this time together. Um, and again, I very much appreciate your time. I appreciate you um, being here with me and supporting me, and um, let's do that. Let's continue to uplift and support each other um, in our practices and as women. And um, gosh, thank you so much, ladies. Um, and until we meet again, good luck to you guys. Reach out if you need to. Let me know how I can support you. Take care.